I'm going to throw one at you. <laughs> I love throwing your curveballs. Whether it's tillage, no-till, minimum till, mm -hmm. or anything in between, in a short cut to the chase zinger, how would you respond if it's successful or not, or if it's working or not? I would test the plant that is growing because the idea of agriculture is to grow plants for food, whether it be humans or otherwise. So I test the plant. I look to see what are the bricks levels, and I have found um, um, very low bricks levels on plants uh, in a no-till environment. Now, bricks. There may be some viewers that have never looked at bricks. That's true. That is true. That's B-R-I-X. And so what we're doing is we're measuring the sugar in a plant, usually in the leaf, and that this measurement is essentially an indirect measurement of photosynthesis. And when we do so, we're simply measuring the health of the plant to try and understand it better. So some of the difficulties that we found uh, with the no-till system are low bricks plants. Now, of course, I'm referring to those plants that they grow in 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 days, 100 days, something like that, where there's a limited amount of time where you got to move quickly. And in those situations uh, where uh, no-till has been adopted, uh, there is a significant, among other things, there's a significant compaction. If there's no compaction, uh, that's good, but we still measure low bricks plants. And so right now, I have not been won over by the no-till system in regards to some plants. Of course, we're talking about the exceptions of the trees because we never till during those situations. But in the short-lived plants, I have not been impressed with what I have seen, and therefore I would not consider myself a fan yet. If the bricks levels go up, I will change my tune. 